Welcome back to Harbor Unboxed. Now, recently we did check out how the Radeon RX Vega 64 and GeForce GTX 1080 stacked up in 2018 using the latest drivers and batch of games. It was a pretty even fight across the 27 games tested, but there were a few big wins going in Nvidia's way, and this did allow the GTX 1080 to win by a 5% margin overall. For the games that offered support for DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, I did test both the APIs and I did notice some very mixed results which I didn't discuss in the previous benchmark video, so I thought that was something we could quickly do now. So I don't think I need to explain too much more, I think we'll just talk about the test system and then we'll get to the benchmark results. So as usual, I'm using our Corsair GPU test rig, which uses the Core i7 8700K, which is clocked at 5 gigahertz and it has 32 gigabytes of DDR for 3400 memory. Uh, I know this will come up with a few of you, and it would have been nice if we had have included the Ryzen 7 2700X, but due to time constraints, because there is a bit going on at the moment, I wasn't able to update with all those results. And believe it or not, that kind of testing does take quite a large amount of time. And as I said, I just don't have that time available at the moment. And this is testing I would like to do, but I think at this point I will reserve it for the next generation GPUs. Anyway, we have half a dozen titles to check out, so let's get into it. First up, we have the Battlefield 1 results, and here we see when using the DirectX 11 API, the performance between Vega 64 and the GTX 1080 is very similar. We see the exact same 106 FPS on average, with a slightly better 1% low result for the Radeon GPU. However, once we move to DirectX 12, the GTX 1080 falls away while Vega 64 maintains the same performance seen when using DX11. So, providing you have a high-end CPU, it doesn't really matter which API Vega owners use, while GeForce owners will certainly want to stick with DirectX 11. This time when testing with Deus Ex Mankind Divider, we see a similar average frame rate using either DirectX 11 or DirectX 12. The GTX 1080 was just 4 to 5 FPS slower than the Vega graphics card in both situations. However, we see a rather hefty 11% drop off for the 1% low result when using DirectX 12, which is obviously a very bad result. In theory, the low level API should offer better frame time performance, but in this implementation, it's much worse. This leads me to conclude that anyone with a high-end CPU should avoid DirectX 12 entirely for this title. Here we see the complete opposite. The MPC Heavy Hitman runs worlds better using DirectX 12 for both the Radeon and GeForce GPUs. The performance uplift really is massive, but please note this hasn't always been the case. About a year ago now, there was very little difference between the two APIs, and we found for the most part that DX11 was more consistent. Today though, the GTX 1080 is 18% faster when using DirectX 12, and Vega 64 was a whopping 27% faster. Truly massive gains there, and it means anyone playing Hitman will certainly want to make sure they're using the DirectX 12 API. Moving on to some testing with Sniper Elite 4, here we see the GTX 1080 to have a significant advantage when using DirectX 11. However, once we test both GPUs using DX12, we find a very similar performance, performance that is comparable to the GTX 1080's DX11 result. Warhammer Vermintide 2 will likely play better using DirectX 12 with a lower end CPU, but with a high end CPU, it seems DirectX 11 is the way to go, at least with Vega 64. Even the GTX 1080 sees a massive 16% drop in performance for the 1% low result when using DirectX 12 opposed to DirectX 11, and this isn't the first time we're seeing such a result. So once again, for high-end hardware, we recommend using DirectX 11, and this gives Vega 64 a notable advantage. Warhammer 2 throws up some mixed results. Here we see Vega 64 actually providing better performance using DirectX 11, while the GTX 1080 is much the same using either API. An odd result, but it's another example of how baked in DirectX 12 performs. Okay, so we're now deep into 2018, and despite that, we're still seeing mixed DirectX 12 performance. And quite shockingly, it's some of the oldest DX12 titles that are now showing the best results uh, with the more modern API. Despite lacking full hardware support, Nvidia has been able to work around Pascal's shortcomings with driver trickery, though we have seen this uh, impact the performance of certain CPUs, namely those from AMD. I should just note that the margins between DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 will vary depending on the CPU used. Lower end CPUs uh, may benefit more from DirectX 12. But for high end rigs using, well, high end CPUs and GPUs, it's quite clear that you will need to do uh, some research to work out which API uh, will work best in a given title. It was quite surprising to see that Vega 64 really only offered a performance boost over the GTX 1080 and DirectX 12 titles such as Battlefield 1 and um, 
yeah, it was just Battlefield 1, wasn't it? So, hmm. Oh, and for those of you donning the Red Warrior face paint, this was a DirectX 11 versus DirectX 12 comparison. So that's why the only two Vulcan games worth testing weren't included. I know that's going to come up so much in the comments. Why didn't you test Vulcan? It always comes up. DirectX 11, DirectX 12 is the reason here. And on that note, I'm running for cover. As always, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do at Hero Unboxed, consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.